for this purse project, I pick up this sign at the at-home store. It was 75% off, so only $5, and they had three different styles available. So to get started, I'm going to remove all the hooks here and then the paper backing that's on the frame. Now that that's removed, I'm going to take my folk art chalk paint and the matte white, and I'm going to paint over the H-O-M-E letters. Since they're black, that'll help to prevent any bleed through no matter what I decide to put over them. So next I'm going to choose four different patterns for my cardstock book that I got here from Hobby Lobby for 40% off. And I want four different colors and type patterns since they're going to have to be small shapes to fit inside those little decorative framings that were around the letters before. So now for my shapes that I was going to put in between these little frames are the little bunny peeps. I didn't want to pay for them on the Cricut so I went over to Google Images and I put in like bunny peep or peep bunny clip art and once I found a shape I liked I copied and pasted that into the design studio and then I had it cut it up for me but you could do the same just cut these out of paper you could put napkins wood forms whatever you find and then I'm just going to decoupage these by adding the Mod Podge the Mod Podge that I particularly use is the matte finish so while I'm just gluing away on both sides, I was going to tell y'all I got an email from YouTube that I've had a lot of support from everybody and I guess now they're going to let me set up like a membership thing and they're going to give a little super thanks so you can click on the bottom of the video on a super thanks if you want to contribute to the channel, you know, for some brushes or some clearance stuff or some boxes or coffee or whatnot, but I appreciate y'all's support. I thought that was pretty cool. Anywho, back to the good stuff. So this is what it looks like after it's been all modged and podged, and now i got to put the framing all back together. Y'all look at how this turned out, and it looks so cute with the bunny that we did the other day, because it all coordinates, it just looks all intentional. <laughs> So to switch over to make this a bougie bunny, I'm using the mixed media kit that I got in my Michaels boxes a week or so ago because um, I got a black, a white, and a brush in there that I need. And then I've got this little bunny here that I bought from Home Goods. If you want to find him and can't find him in the store, he's from Cottontail Lane, and he is only $19.99. He just needs a little sprucing up, and I also have a little bit of black and white mixed in with my Easter, so I got to add some black and white onto him. And I want to give them some definition because right now everything is really flat. There's not a lot of dimension to him the way that he's made. Now to add my black and white, I'm going to try the easiest thing to do, which is going to be to do black and white checks on his hat because the way they made him is the little um, squares for the checks are raised and lowered. So it gives me some guidelines. And even if you're not I guess the most like uh, accurate at painting because it raises up you could always um, take like a little q-tip if you get anything over like a little q-tip of some alcohol and remove the paint. And to get a smooth nice finish on here too you're probably going to need a couple coats. Um, you could also prime it or do like a chalk paint all over the, something before you paint to make it go on a little bit smoother with less coats. So far, I love that, and then I also did a little black line in between the hat and his ears because it was just kind of like all blurring in together, and then I'm going to take some black and also outline like how I did around his collar. I'm going to do that to separate the clothing and different pieces. He's also got like little buckles on his shoes and all that, and you can't really see because it's just a solid color. Now, also, when they do paint these, they, you know, tend to blur over so I'm taking some of the white chalk paint and then anywhere where like some of the pink from the toadstool like went on his legs and stuff like that I'm gonna take that white and just crisp up those lines that's what makes the difference between these like mass-produced cheaper and the high-end pieces so now y'all can see what I mean so see all those little black lines and details really bringing some definition now to him and he's got little buckles and now like you can see here, like, I had to paint and add some green on there because, like, some of the leaves aren't even painted. And then I'm also going to try to, you know, touch that up. I'll put some green on and maybe some little black lines in the leaves, too, to make them look like the others. 
So now that we got him pretty well defined, I even added like some little brush strokes on the pages there to break them up. But this bottom piece is eh, like really fakey looking. So I'm going to take some of this moss that I got here. It's a super moss from Michaels and it comes in a sheet. It's back over by the florals. And I'm going to take bits of this, break them off, and I'm going to glue them all onto the bottom here. Okay, so I've glued the moss all the way around in little pieces, and then you can trim away any excess you have with scissors. But I'm kind of debating putting little flowers. Y'all let me know what you think. Y'all look at how different that looks. Not a lot of money, just taking some black and some white and doing your highlights. So if you have anything around the house you want to give a new look to or spruce up a little bit, this is a cheap and easy one. This is actually a craft that we did when I was a little girl that my stepmom showed us. But you take a napkin or a rag and then you could take either like yarn or ribbon and then googly eyes. Those are optional. And then some rubber bands. I use rubber bands just to help me out with this. But you're going to turn it sideways like this where it's to a diamond. And then you're going to fold it in half. After that, you're going to take that corner and you're going to fold that corner and start rolling it all the way to your widest point there. So maybe leave like, I'd say about an inch and a half would be good. And then once you've got that rolled, you're going to fold it in half. And then this is where you're going to use the rubber bands, or at least I do, to help me hold it in place. Alright, so now that you have your rubber band, you're going to take again and fold it about halfway in. And if you see, it's kind of forming our ears now. And at the base of those ears, which is going to be our little bunny head, you're going to put that rubber band around. Now you can also just go ahead and put on your ribbon or your um, yarn if you want to. Like I said, I just use this to help me keep it in place. And then once you got your little head made, you're just going to kind of even out your ears by tugging or pull, pushing in. And then once you got them where you want them to be, then you can set up like either your yarn or your ribbon to tie around the head part. See? I learned something new today, y'all. So in those grab bags I just posted the other day, I had this collage yarn. And look, it's these little pieces of yarn. That's the difference. So I had to go back to some of the pink yard I got for my spring and summer grab bags at Michael's to do this project. You learn something every day. So now y'all know, too, if you didn't know like me. So now that I got my little ribbon on there, I just tied just a simple bow. You can make that as elaborate as you want to. And then I'm just making adjustments here to get his ears all good. Now I'm adding the googly eyes. And if I remember correctly, when we made them when I was a little girl, we had little pom-poms and we did a little baby pom-pom on the nose and we did a little pom-pom for his tail. So he had like the cute little bunny tail. So you can do that too if you want. All right, so here he is with his little googly eyes. And like I say, the little uh, teeny tiny little mushy on the pom pom on the nose and the tail really makes it cute but this is cool for kids just to do as a craft project but also so they can be part and set in the table and for your second option i've got this egg you could also use like candy i've got another yarn option i have this little paper tag that i made and um you're going to start the same way you're going to turn it to a like a diamond shape and then you're going to roll from the top down starting at the point and rolling towards your widest end there. Once you do that, then you're going to turn it on its side and bring the two ends together. And see, that's how you make your ears on this one. And then to keep that in place, I'm going to take my rubber band again and get it at placed at where the top of the head would be. Now that I have that where I want it, you kind of zhuzh your ears up. And then I'm just taking this yarn so I can make another simple bow for the top. Once you have your first little knot done, if you want to make the tag, you can do that too. Um, I use this little weeding tool for the Cricut to make my hole in my little baby tag. That way, you know, there's no way there's going to be a hole punch. It's going to be that teeny tiny. 
but I feed that through before I make the bow. And if you want to do the same, you could do that to be able to do like your place settings. And then in the center, again, you could use like chocolates or the egg or little alcohol bottles, whatever you want to give for favors. In my case, it's this little egg here. So I'm going to put that, zhuzh, and that is all there is to it. So here's how they look. Here's the little bunny with the googly eyes. And then the more modern one with the little tag. These particular planners I got at the at-home store. They were 50% off. So instead of $19.99, they were $10. And then the folk art little white matte chalk paint that I usually use. And I'm just taking and doing one quick coat over the top. And instead of it being like the tan and the white, I want the opposite. So I'm taking one of these paper towels here and I'm just wiping off the excess paint. So it leaves it pretty clear. And I left the inside just plain because it's going to be covered with the flowers anyways. And all these florals are ones that were from the spring and summer Michael's grab bags. So I've got some of these purple berries and these pink and orange ones are uh, labeled as baby's breath. So I'm going to take some of these purple berries and I'm going to cut them down so that they're just over the pot. Of course, you don't want them too tall. You want to make sure that everything fits low in there. So I'm cutting them about the halfway point and then I'm just going to put them in. If you want this to be more permanent, you can use floral foam. I usually just put it in here so I can easily change everything out from season to season. And then for a contrast, I'm taking some of the orange baby's breath and I'm just placing it kind of randomly inside. That way it's not too much of a contrast, but just slight. So it's not too boring and just all purple. But this one is a quick and easy fix. You could easily do this with maybe some Dollar Tree pots, make them cute, make them your own. And again, you can change them out for each season, which is nice. So this next sign was also from the at-home store. It was $18 originally and then discounted at 75% off again. So it's $4 of some change. And it says, hey, y'all. As much as I said, hey, y'all, you think I just left this one alone. But... It has this beautiful like blue design back here with this floral. So I'm going to remove the Hey Y'all lettering and then I'm going to add um, some of my little vintage pieces to the center here. And the Hey Y'all is not stickers. It's some type of paint. So I actually have to remove that from the inside. To clean the lettering off of the glass, I tried at first to use rubbing alcohol and I put it all over in it and do it, do a thing. So I had to go get a little razor blade and then scrape off all those letters. So after doing that for about 15 minutes, I needed the other type of alcohol for sure. But here's the inside, looks really pretty. Now I'm just gonna pick out which cutout I think works best for the center here. And these were purchased at Hobby Lobby. Looks just like the cards, the from the cards that Momo used to send at Easter, don't they? But I think I like this blue one the best. Now, because it was made like a little ornament to be hung, once I removed the little string from there, it's got a little hole in the top of the umbrella. So I'm taking this little wood filler putty stuff, and I'm just going to push it into the hole from the front and the back, and I just smooth it out with my finger. To cover up that little brown wood filler hole, I'm going to take the Waverly chalk paint and the ballet slipper, and I'm just doing like a little highlight where it almost is like a shadow kind of thing on the top of the umbrella, but I'm doing it on both sides so it doesn't look out of place since that pink's not an exact match. And I would normally add just hot glue to this, but the back is bent a little bit, so I'm adding some E6000 in the center, and then I'm adding some hot glue around. That way the E6000, it has a stronger bond, so it'll help in the middle. Um, to hold that tight and then the hot glue will keep it in place while that's setting. I'm just going to put a little weight on it in the meantime. Now once I got her in I figure I need to add some white on here because that's just a little bit too plain with that natural wood. Isn't she super cute? Anyways, if I can do these you can do and remember like and subscribe if you can. Thanks.
Thank you.